Hey guys, it's White Monkey here with a new video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about what my new series, Bakasi, is all about. With Bakasi, I knew I wanted to do something very different from Apple Black, my other ongoing series, and you know, just stretch my mind and like my writing and just do something really out there, something a little more mature, something a little more unorthodox, experimental, funny, a little more satire. So it'll give me more freedom and maybe it'll be even more fun it's already a lot of fun creating almost anything i do i wanted to do something with a little more diverse cast i wanted to add a new dimension to diversity tell different kinds of stories and still interject my develop developing views and social narratives and things like that and overall still have fun though for those who don't know i graduated recently with a master's in fine arts and mfa and so Part of my thesis was actually developing Bakasi as well So there's a lot of like research and actual schoolwork <laughs> that has to do with uh, the making of Bakasi So essentially I went to school to make manga <laughs> And this was at the University of Texas at Arlington uh, I also did my undergrad there with a computer science minor and a fine art major concentration in drawing The master's was a concentration in uh, visual communications, but I still did a lot of stuff beyond just graphic design and things like that because that's basically what visual communication design is. So if any of you are interested in reading my thesis that I graduated with, uh, 40 pages of it with art and just kind of notes of everything kind of encapsulated in this one PDF that kind of just explains everything I went through to a degree, not every everything, but all the key points. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description and you can click on that before I kill the link. So let's get down to it. Bakasi, where a feared group of wild gang members who are now all either dead or missing, except for one, in a world where humans and interdimensional creatures of the underworld now shear the earth, Damon, the last known Bakasi original, Wilton, his nerdy best friend, and Shauna, a demon rich girl, redefine what it means to be Bakasi. Pop culture, socio-economical, and political issues ensue as the new Bakasi go through satirical situations, dire threats, and crazy adventures with a cast of exaggerated characters in this new world. Bakasi takes place in an alternate universe inspired by our modern world, where the mana creatures live in peace with humans on Earth facing the same economical and social issues. This is all after the war where Aquin Su, the lord of all demonic dimensions, tries to forcefully take over and rule Earth due to overpopulation and various other forms of crisis in all the other dimensions. Archangels from heaven assign warriors marked by God named Nephilim to defend Earth from demons. Equilums. The demons, you know, lose the war. The devil loses the war, uh, Aquin Su, and takes it out on his demons, and they kind of ab abandon him and migrate to Earth after brokering a peace treaty. It's almost like they go on strike. And it's, it's kind of like a, a stupid premise, but that's also to highlight that the show is not one I plan to take too seriously. It's not one that would take itself too seriously. I, I plan for Bakasi to be a tad bit meta. Damon, Wilton, Shauna, and their mysterious pet dog make up the new gang in town called Bakasi. So in epi episodic fashion, Bakasi goes through regular first world struggles and shenanigans, both economically and socially in this new world. On occasion, the gang finds themselves in more dire scenarios, haunted by, say, their da dark respective pasts or future threats. Um, they're both human and demonic and uh, angelic threats in this series. Uh, the threats can be physical, mental, political, social, the list goes on. Uh, the tone of the story is one that to be satirical in nature, uh, and from the main story down to how censorship, uh, at least how censorship is executed in the series, is no stranger to humor. Uh, there will be a lot of maturity in the series, funny stuff, action-packed adventures with some darker themes uh, and all sorts of uh, forms of commentary, whatever I'm commenting on. But there will be that line. I'll be walking that line of what kind of genre this is. So the world in Bakasi is one that would look very normal, but like the only difference is when you once you glance at it, you see all sorts of races and species and things like that uh, living in peace. At least that's how it appears uh, in the world. 
you know, while echoing some of the issues, the same issues, whether it be racial tensions or things like that uh, from the modern world that you know right now. Uh, sometimes you may look at uh, Bokassi and see some strands of Afrofuturism and what Afrofuturism is is just like the reimagining of uh, African American history or African history uh, and blending it with fantasy and sci-fi uh, and just reimagining that so a good example would be Wakanda from Black Panther kind of reimagining the history and inputting uh, fantasy and sci-fi in there uh, you can kind of see Bakasi playing a tiny role there, but I feel like maybe it'll be a little more inclusive to not just African American history, but just all forms of history. Uh, where this is an alternate universe where this obviously didn't happen. And now that it's happened, it's kind of changed the landscape of the world and changed technology. Now you have like uh, more demonic input. And that's it, even though from our view, it's that, but in that particular world, it's normal. So if you see uh, an airplane in the shape of a dragon or you know a building with like the eye uh, a, a, a huge eye uh, at the top of the building like the thing in uh, Lord of the Rings it's like a normal thing in that world where they've blended in so all the events that led to how the world is today have happened a long time ago so everything is kind of like cooling off and everyone's kind of like normal and uh the the these demonic creatures are the new minorities they're the new minorities the other minorities still exist but this is just adding a new layer a new dimension to it one of the new things i can do in the series is take uh creatures from popular culture and just paint them as demonic creatures that have come here to earth to you know stay in peace but they're actually echoing uh, pop culture so i could have a demon that looks exactly like a uh, colossal titan or a demon that looks exactly like a uh, uh, freaking predator but maybe designed a little bit to where he has like maybe dreads and smokes weed whatever you know and i can kind of have fun with that or uh creatures that look like alien and kind of poke fun at popular culture and do parodies or you know just make fun of that and i think that's all it'll also be like a joy to look at i've always wanted to make a series like this especially one that's satirical where i could have some commentary uh on like you know issues but still in a very fun way nothing too serious or preachy just like fun but i feel like maybe uh, the reason I hadn't done something like this sooner or, or had more of it in Apple Black because I feel like slowly I'm throwing it in there in Apple Black. But uh, here, the reason why maybe I hadn't done that sooner is because growing up in a um, predominantly black African country, I never had to deal with uh, racial issues or issues like this. And maybe I was also young and I wasn't like really exposed to it or I didn't expose myself to uh, stuff like this or think critically in this realm and you know now you're getting a little older and just things you're getting more ideas and you're you're seeing things and you're getting more experience in things and you know sometimes maybe have stuff to say whether it be stupid or just serious or whatever it is uh, I just wanted to have a series where I could I, I could almost vent in a comedic way not so serious way uh, a what if you, you know just have fun and like that kind of fun similar to a show like a boondocks or a south park or something like that and uh, i've always been big fans of uh, series like that and i know i wanted to do something like that like even the way i want to approach censorship in this comic is very different from the way it's probably approached anywhere else that i have seen so it's something where i'm kind of raising awareness to it but also risking you uh, coming out of immersion to notice that censorship rather than staying in line with the series, but, it's, it, but it, like staying in the same tone with the series. But at the same time, the way I'm alerting you to the censorship is kind of comedic. So it's kind of in the same tone as well. It's almost like it's part of the series and you kind of just roll along with it. And the characters are occasionally self-aware of these things. So is there is also a little Deadpool in there and it really just is there to highlight how yes censorship is good but sometimes the way it's executed can be ridiculous there was an old series I wanted to do this with a uh, previous series and I feel like that series is while maybe it still exists but it's kind of morphed into Bakasi and that was Flynn Ultra I wanted to do something like that with a series called Flynn Ultra um, 
and uh, one of the one of the things about it was that uh, one of my key things about the, even the way I named it is like uh, Flynn and Ultra is like starting with an F and a U, F U, you know. So the little Easter egg nods in there, and even I want to do something like that with Bacasi because Bacasi originally was called First World Underworld, so even the title was a little ridiculous. Uh, but even that was like an F U, so it's kind of like that series morphed into this, and maybe there there's still there's still their own things. Who knows? But. Uh, Bakasi itself has gone through several alterations. There's been a lot of working on it. Like uh, the character designs, I made sure I spent a lot of time with that, and I feel like I'm happy with what I have right now. Uh, the series title, like I said, it was First World Underworld, now it's Bakasi, and I feel like Bakasi is more true to what I want to do. And it's even though the, the title's a little more serious, but there's like that curiosity to it. Also, Bakasi has Baka in it, which I believe means idiot or fool in Japanese, but not that the name is a Japanese name, it's actually a Nigerian or African name uh, Bakasi was or origin like the title originates from a vigilante group a little mythical vigilante group in Nigeria where a group of people kind of take justice into their own hands when uh, the police is not around and like, like, like they cut off limbs if they find you guilty and stuff like that so it's kind of taking uh, bits and pieces of that group influencing the group that I'm coming up with the fictional group here and it's also spelt with a K not a C the original so if you want to google it you spell it with a K uh, because is also the title of a peninsula in between I believe Nigeria and Cameroon uh, or Guinea uh, is that the Gulf of Guinea but it's one of those and it's something where the people from there feel like they, be they belong to uh, Nigeria but officially they are part of Cameroon. So it's one of those things where it also ties into like the overall theme of uh, the series where you have a group of people belonging somewhere, but they find themselves in a different position. I also like the design of the logo. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that as well. And one of the cool things is I, I love like this brush style uh, logos for the series and one of the cool things about this is that then it has that little snake thing which I made to be like the universal tattoo that all original members of the Bakasi gang had in this series and that's why Damon kind of has it uh, below his eye uh, but the new Bakasi wouldn't have it it's kind of like one of those old tra traditions that everybody in the gang before had that tattoo almost like uh, that way maybe it wasn't maybe not everybody had it as a face tat but everybody had that tattoo to show that they were part of the gang and but uh, and uh, Damon it's kind of part of the original at least when it was young even though you can kind of see him as not one of the almost like a coffee boy at the time but now that time has passed he's trying to keep the spirit of the Picasso alive but there are things about Picasso that probably would paint them as as villains and Damon now being the only member has the chance to redefine the group and redefine what it means to be Picasso and you know clean out all the dirt from the past the past of the group with his new little weird group there are times where you'd be able to look at the series and and eat any of them could be the lead I think overall like if I were to pick if you put a gun to my head I'd say it's Damon but there would be moments where it could be Shauna it could be Wilton or it could be Damon or it could even be uh, Kirby their mysterious pet dog uh, Damon is also a failed underground rapper, so he's also you can also view him as someone that's always trying to get you to listen to his mixtape, <laughs> which I think is funny. But he's also like this lazy punk attitude, uh, really brash, uh, but unusually empathetic and sentimental in, in, in certain scenarios. But he also has like this huge ego. And through his ties with the original Bakasi gang, he has like a really good understanding of this shady underworld. Uh, and by underworld in this in this sense, I don't mean like a demonic underworld. I mean like the underworld of like you know gangs and rules and you know stuff like that, mafia stuff, just the shady underworld businesses and stuff like that. So he has kind of like an understanding of that and a way to see through all that. Basically a hustler. And then Wilton, his his best friend, who again I'll leave most of all the stuff to like say how they meet and stuff like that to the series itself when I when I get to do uh, tell those stories but Wilton is kind of like his younger best friend who kind of looks up to Damon and at the same time it's kind of like the tech savvy guy of the group he's the glue of the group and by tech savvy not just the tech and sci-fi as you know it but it's also like demonic tech and stuff like that like I said everything is kind of like 
normalized to a degree like i could even input like a demonic steve jobs like character in the series that kind of puts out uh you know mobile devices and the mobile devices could keep doing ridiculous things and i could comment on how everybody's always on their phones in a very funny stupid way and hell that could even be one whole episode but uh i wanted to have fun with stuff like that and then you have shauna the demonic teenage girl you know rich girl because she comes from a rich family but she's kind of dis disowned them uh because of their shady businesses so she's from like an evil family you can look at it that way and she's very self-conscious of her uh, third eye and there's history as to why say we only see one of her horns uh, rather than both I wanted to do something a little different here where the character usually the devils are in red I wanted to do something in blue it was a struggle because then some of it started to feel like mystique from X-Men but I was like you know I'll find a way to make it different with the third eye the horns uh, and all the other stuff that's attributed to her that would make her different and stand out well, obviously it's a different shade of blue and the hair is different and she she would be very different once you see her uh, actually in play in the series and I wanted to do something different to where she's not like the damsel in distress uh, she's actually you can she's actually she doesn't look it but she's the muscle of the group and in this world uh, certain demonic tech magic stuff is not I'll say not necessarily legal but sometimes demonic demons or equalums as I call them in this series and everything is kind of inspired from uh, where I come from Nigeria so in uh, the Igbo language what uh, the god of war or god of mischief or the devil in some cases is referred to he's referred to as Ekwensu and so that's kind of where I get the name from but I kind of break it down and spell it differently as Ekwensu and then the demons are equal limbs and then what the angels made some of the warriors to help in the former battles are called Nephilim and I explain how that ties well I actually wouldn't explain how that ties into the series overall because I want to give everything away but um, and I also talk about some of the influences and reasons why I've made decisions like this anyways uh, being this type of species that Shauna is she's almost like the muscle of the group and she has like this heartless dad that has kind of trained her for any situation so she's not just the muscle of the group but she's like really smart as well and she's good with like all the fighting stuff and most of her moves are influenced by wrestling wrestling moves even though she's not a pro wrestling fan she's influenced by those moves and it's kind of funny because then Damon and uh, and Wilton are huge wrestling fans where she isn't so there there are some funny moments to play with that especially because she does wrestling moves and you know say she wouldn't want to go with them to a wrestling show because she thinks it's stupid but long story short there's stuff to play around with that i myself a huge wrestling fan at least huge wrestling pro wrestling fan uh big Shawn michaels fan big bray Wyatt fan not gonna talk more about that but that's a probably a video for another time for the character designs i paid close attention to color and hopefully with these kind of videos where i'm talking about my series you guys can also kind of take little bits and pieces of how I'm thinking and how I'm making some of the decisions that I'm making um, and hopefully those help so for instance with the character designs I paid close attention to uh, color and with uh, Damon's red eyes just to suggest that like harsh behind the scenes like behind the eyes there is like a dark tormented person there somewhere uh, the yellow jacket uh, contrasting Wilton's purple eyes and green jersey. The yellow jacket also serves as a strong iconography and a nod to the aggressive nature of an actual yellow jacket insect. They kind of look like bees and stuff like that. Uh, parallel to Damon's aggressive attitude. And then Damon also has the tattoo uh, 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 underneath his eye, kind of referencing that he was part of the original Bakasi gang. And then his overall attire has this rapper tone to it. You know also kind of a nod to the fact that he raps or he either he raps really bad because he's a failed failed rapper but he has that rapper touch to him and then Wilton wearing a number 10 jersey usually uh, I'm also a big soccer fan and the number 10 is usually reserved for the players that kind of control the pace of the game they're kind of the engineers behind the game plan of a team moving forward so that's also hinting at the fact that Wilton is the smarts the tech savvy one and kind of like the glue that holds holds the team together because 
say for instance shauna and damon don't particularly get along that easily or that well even though just enough to say deep down even though they might not admit it consider themselves friends and then shauna coming up with that deceptively strong look so that when she actually does strong feats it comes off as surprising and then from her rich background you have like a little bit of a private school uniform look to her but then with all like this jewelry and um obviously things that hint at her background being the type of species she is this demonic species this equilum uh hinting at the fact that maybe she's beyond that she's more than that and that uh she is curious to um curious to the outside world and it's not just defined by private school or riches and things like that and i say i describe her as someone who also has heart and stuff like that she can be really really cold but she can be really warm as well and also i think deep down the differences that shauna and damon will have would have much less to do with race or where they're from or attitudes even though that might play a role a little bit but it will have more to do with the differences in class within society because people like damon don't come from riches at all and sometimes I'll continue to ask myself questions in this series where obviously besides the references to my Nigerian youth, Bukasi was created to explore what would happen in a world similar to ours where a completely new species joins our civilization and becomes the new minority demonized, get it, by uh, the predecessors, demonized by the people there before it, uh, would everybody kind of come together and discriminate and pigeonhole them into a new stereotype or would uh the already existing stereotypes continue like what would happen exploring that new dimension a little tick in there as you can tell bakasi is inspired by several other uh series and films and things like that uh, personally i'm inspired by a lot of filmmakers um and a lot of animators and writers whether it be comics here in the west or in the east uh, or Sa uh, Osamu Tezuka, uh, Miyazaki, you know, filmmakers like Nolan, um, M. Night, Fincher, Guy Ritchie, the list goes on. But when it comes to uh, the series that inspired Bakasi directly, you look at uh, series like Dimension W for uh, the depiction of a world with man and machine coexisting with rules in a system. Uh, shows like South Park inspired me because of its clever style of storytelling and comedic approach to uh, social commentary. Uh, series like The Boondocks influenced me through its authentic humor that's true to uh, black culture. Uh, Netflix Bright, the feature length film with uh, Will Smith for its depiction of a world where humans and uh, fantastical creatures like fairies and elves uh, live together while echoing tensions between the races similar to the tensions that exist today. And with Bright, that was funny because I was actually developing Bakasi long before I saw that Bright trailer. And so when I saw the Bright trailer and how similar it was, one, I knew, okay, I have to watch it. But then I was like, damn it. This is kind of my idea, kind of, except uh, through a different lens and uh, from a different perspective, uh, the, sp the perspective of cops. Uh, a lot of people had issues with Bright, and I kind of agree with some of the issues, but overall, I had fun watching it, so I'm not going to knock it too much. It was still a fun watch, and I recommend it uh, to you guys, for you guys to go check out. Uh, but I definitely see the issues in it, but it was still... Definitely a fun watch. Uh, Ugly Americans is another title that heavily influenced Bakasi. Uh, it's another influence of mine. Uh, unlike Netflix Bright, Ugly Americans kind of focuses more on the struggles of other species uh, facing integration into this human world in very hilarious fashion. Like I believe the lead, the lead in Ugly Americans has like a zombie, a zombie roommate who's secretly trying to eat his brains and stuff like that. So it's funny stuff like that. Gintama, I like I believe I think Gintama is one of the funniest, if not the funniest, Japanese animation, Japanese comic out there. Period to me, and it's a world where humans in ancient Japan live in peace with aliens and their advanced uh, advanced technology. Again, quote unquote peace. Uh, however, in, in Gintama, I was influenced more by the team and friendship dynamics between the main characters and how they operate as an entertaining unit. 
I also studied the main character dynamics and dysfunctionalities between the characters in television shows like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Love that show. And there are more influences. So with Bakasi, I just plan to have fun. I might even make fun of not just popular culture, but, you know, say maybe other Saturday AM or Saturday PM titles if, you know, I get to do that. A lot of people ask questions, wait, does this mean that Apple Black stops? No, Apple Black is continuing more so than uh, Bakasi. Bakasi is like I'm still working out a system of how I'm going to get Bakasi to run and I'll make sure to keep everybody tuned in. But no worries because I've already started working on Apple Black Volume 3. Big shout outs to everyone who's purchased Apple Black 1 and 2. If this video does well, like say maybe a thousand likes and stuff like that, I'll upload videos uh, like separate videos, maybe focusing more on some of the illustrations you see me create in this video and clips and kind of talk about tips and what's going on and my thought process even further. Uh, like the colored illustration you're about to see, uh, I'll go, there will be a video showing how I colored it. I'll probably upload it anyways, but if this video does really well and you guys are interested in it, there will be a whole lot more urgency into put putting that video out along with other illustrations and uh, sketchbook tours to some of the illustrations I created for Bokasi because I also did something different where uh, the promotional posters and covers for Bokasi I didn't use Copic markers except for one of them but like most the rest of them I did with watercolor uh, gouache paint also to highlight that you know I'm doing something different then uh, it's going to be different from Apple Black and works I did prior to this. Also videos on how to pitch, how to come up with a synopsis, a plot, and develop your own ideas. So stay tuned. Uh, if, if this video does well in the likes, the views, the comments, and all that, you share the video if you really like it. I'll have more videos like this and how to develop your own ideas. So stay tuned for that. For those who don't know me, I'm the creator of Apple Black, White Manga, and you can read the first four chapters of Apple Black free links in the description below, uh, all on Saturday AM. All the links you could possibly need, including my social media, will be in the description below. My Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all at White Manga, except for here on YouTube where it's White Manga TV. Uh, DeviantArt is also White Manga. Uh, I'm also the creator of Bakasi, published and serialized on Saturday PM, which is the more mature version of Saturday AM. You can think of it as the adult swim of everything where there are more unorthodox titles in there it's a little more meta it's a little more experimental it's a little more mature a little more adult so you probably see things you don't want your kids to see so while working on manga at the university of texas at arlington i also have maybe some stories and some teacher stories that you guys might be interested in so you guys can leave comments if you're interested in that kind of stuff and maybe i'll make videos uh, regarding that and actually being the only person doing comics in that in the mfa program especially manga and kind of the reception i got especially when everyone is so used to exhibiting versus publishing work, um, exhibiting work in galleries and things like that. And I ended up having, actually having uh, the manga in the gallery and in you know galleries doing that kind of stuff, uh, which is unique and different from what I was, I'm used to. So some, maybe some fun, weird, uh, awkward, but very cool stories and presenting my, like it's, it's a very different world and, uh, it, different from me and I'm different from them and it was just cool to kind of see everything come together and how it could play out if you're interested in that I can go I can talk and talk about that as well don't forget to check out Saturday a.m. and p.m. And you guys can actually have ads inside the magazine starting at ten dollars that come with a free subscription to the magazines and you will run it'll be like a permanent ad in the magazine until you know someone replaces you replaces your ad but like your ad could run inside the magazine forever until replaced and then for those who have read the latest issue said the am uh, issue 88 there's a survey in it and if you fill it out you could win a free illustration from one of our top creators could be me lastly you will be able to read the first couple pages of bakasi in saturday pm issue 2 and I will be giving away 10 free subscriptions for people who go to the site. Uh, again, links to this will also be in the description. Everything will be in the description. And if you go and you submit some fan art, we'll choose the best and award them a premium subscription where you get access to Saturday AM and PM. PM. 10 people who do like fan art and submit it there. At some point when there are a little more pages of Bakasi that have been done, uh, it'll be free to read and at that point I'll let you guys know when but for now if you want to read the early pages right now That's how you do it 
guys I even did like a little little animation test with Bakasi and I'll go into more details on that maybe in a different video just to not jam pack everything into one video and if you're interested in that yeah let me know that's all folks I hope you guys enjoyed this whole video I hope you guys have a clear understanding of what Bakasi is about now I uh, hope you guys enjoyed all the stuff I showed you uh, again if you want to see more in-depth videos maybe talking specifically about how I made did the coloring for the illustration in this video you know leave a comment if you're interested in that Please share the video, like the video. I'll probably post it anyway, but there'll be more urgency if I know you guys are actually interested in that kind of stuff. Just make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Don't forget to check out my other series, Apple Black, and you can purchase the first two volumes. I'll leave links to everything. Again, everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. If you have a question, it's probably in the description, but you can still ask me. I'm available to any questions. This was fun, guys. It's why manga. And I'm outie.